it was really very, very tough. The grinding urban warfare that has destroyed much of the grandly named Sultan Omar Dianalan Boulevard shows just how much of a threat Islamic State is to the Philippines and potentially other countries in the Southeast Asian region. But when the fighting started, Philippine authorities were unfazed. After the Islamic State-backed militants took over large parts of picturesque, Lakeside Marawi in May, the country's defense minister, Delphin Lorenzana, predicted the entire conflict would be over in one week. Now, after four months of intense aerial bombardment and house-by-house -house battles, Philippine commanders believe they are in the final stages of the operation to oust the rebels from the city. In the past two weeks, military officials say they have conquered three militant bastions, including a mosque, and restricted about 60 remaining guerrillas to about 10 devastated city blocks in the business district. Patrols have been increased on the lake to prevent the supply of armaments and recruits to the hold-up militants. Military officers who have skirmished for years with Islamic insurgents in the southern Philippines say the battle in Marawi has been more intense and difficult than earlier encounters. He said he has served for almost a decade in the remote jungles and mountains of Mindanao, the southern Philippines region that has long been racked by insurgencies. Now, Karandang says, the military is in unfamiliar urban terrain. The militants have exploited the battlefield to their advantage and held off Philippines forces despite a 10 to 1 numerical advantage for the government troops. Borrowing heavily from Islamic State tactics in the Iraqi city of Mosul, they have surrounded themselves with hostages and used snipers and a network of tunnels Marawi's underground drainage system and rat holes, crevices in the walls of high floors allowing access to adjacent buildings, have enabled the rebels to evade bombs and remain undetected, soldiers at the battlefront said. We believe there have been some foreign terrorists that have been directing their operations that's why they are, how do I define this, really good, said Karandang. We have seen some cadavers of foreigners. Some are white, some are black and some tall people we guess are Asians, from outside the Philippines. We have been hearing in their transmissions some English-speaking terrorists. Scavenge for food they said they could hide well in the cities. They can get civilians to become hostages and it's more difficult in the mountains with only the soldiers, he said. Many of the fighters are young recruits, who are fanatical and accomplished fighters, the soldiers said. For a description of how Mindanao youngsters are recruited by militants, click on NL3N1KB1Z5 proposal rebuffed Nahib Sinarimbo, a Muslim leader who has negotiated between the military and Islamic separatists for years, said he and other elders had urged the armed forces to allow militias and rival Islamist groups to take the lead in ousting the Islamic State militants. The proposal was rebuffed, Sinarimbo said. Air power, the military assured them, was the path to a quick win. Zia Alanto Adian, a provincial politician, said the military also had doubts about the loyalty of some of the political personalities offering to provide their militias to push out the fighters. The result was a city in ruins, hundreds of thousands of residents displaced and emboldened Islamists, Sinarimbo said. They proceeded with the aerial bombing but they didn't take the city, Sinarimbo said. The military lost authority. In addition, the devastation of the city will play into militants' hands, creating resentment and further radicalizing many youngsters, he said. Mindanao has long been marred by the decades of Muslim hostility to rule from Manila. After years fighting insurgent groups and then long negotiations, the government signed an agreement in 2014 to give Muslim-majority areas in Mindanao autonomy. But the deal has been long delayed. This part of the Philippines is fertile ground to plant violent extremism, Adiang said. There is a narrative of social injustice that is strong. Young people are fed up with the peace process and nothing concrete or sustainable has developed. The militants use this as the basis to entice people, to get support of the local people. Last stand? We are monitoring the enemy's transmissions and it's like during these final days they are being more fanatical, he said. Transmissions indicate they are preparing for suicide bombings. Suicide attacks are rare in the Philippines despite decades of Islamist insurgency. 
that's the difference between here and Syria and Iraq, said Ordiles, the Marine General. It's almost the same war tactics and fighting tactics, the one thing that's not the same is the human bomb or the suicide bombing.